All right, this video is for my ham radio subscribers and is uh, answering a question that one of them had was, is there a way to measure the deviation of an FM transmitter without using a spectrum analyzer or a service monitor? Because those are pretty expensive items. And the answer, of course, is yes. There's a couple of ways. Uh, the fastest and easiest way and less expensive way is to use an FM deviation meter, uh, like this uh, one from Marconi Instruments here. Or a more common in the ham radio world is this guy right here. That's the Heathkit IM4180. Uh, and that's a, a really nice unit, works really well. You could typically find it for about a hundred bucks. And uh, so if you're going to be making some deviation measurements or adjusting FM transmitters, that's a good way to go. But if you don't want to spend that kind of money and you just want to try and make a quick measurement here, you can actually do it using nothing more than a CW receiver. And uh, it's using a technique called the Bessel Null or Carrier Null method. Really interesting and it works really well, but in order to understand what's happening with it, we need to talk a little bit about theory. Uh, not too much, uh, just to kind of give you a basic understanding here. Don't go away, don't get scared off, but let's talk about uh, just a little bit of theory of what's going on. So let's first think of an AM signal. If we do a simple amplitude modulation of a carrier, say a 100 megahertz carrier, 2.5 kilohertz audio tone, amplitude modulate it, this is the resulting spectrum. You get energy at the carrier and then an upper and lower sideband separated by that modulation frequency. Really simple. FM unfortunately is not so simple. So if we look at the resulting spectrum of that same 100 megahertz carrier, this time frequency modulated with a 2.5 kilohertz audio tone, with a 5 kilohertz deviation, uh, very common that we use in uh, ham radio. This is what the resulting spectrum is. This is the same scale as the previous image. So it occupies a lot more bandwidth. We still have the carrier, but now we have a whole series of upper side bands and lower side band tones. Okay? And the magnitude, the size of those tones, will vary as a function of both the modulating frequency and the deviation. So in the way they vary, as a function of those things is through or following essentially a series of what are called Bessel curves or Bessel functions. Now there's a pretty complex graph. We're just going to break it down for you and just kind of show you what we're talking about here. What this graph is showing you is the magnitude or size or strength of the carrier and each of the, you know, the first set of sidebands, the second set of sidebands, the third, and so on as a function of this parameter called modulation index. A modulation index is really nothing more than the peak deviation divided by the modulating frequency. So for example, if we adjust the modulating frequency up and down, the modulation index will vary up and down, and therefore the magnitude of the carrier and the sidebands will vary following these curves at any given you know, modulation index. So let's see how we can use this to our advantage. If we look at the carrier curve, you can actually see that the carrier curve crosses through zero right here. Right at that point, the modulation index is actually 2.405. So if we can adjust the modulation frequency until the carrier drops to zero, then we know that the modulation index is 2.405, and we multiply that and the modulation frequency together, and we get the deviation. Bang, we're done. So all we need is to devise a method to monitor the carrier level. And that's where the CW receiver comes in. So a CW receiver allows you to, to essentially receive a, a CW tone. In this case, it's going to be our carrier. All right, and, just mo and then there's a BFO that beats against that so we can actually get a, a tone we can hear. But we can also measure the carrier power you know, on the S meter. Uh, you're going to want to adjust the, to the CW receiver so that its passband is narrow enough that it's only going to see the carrier and not any of the sideband levels. And that's usually not a problem. Okay, uh, And so we'll just uh, set that adjustment up. Now the only hitch in my particular setup here is that I don't have a UHF and VHF receiver that can receive CW uh, to you know, actually beat against that carrier tone like a CW receiver. I've only got this HF rig. So what I did is I simply used uh, this mixer that I showed in a video a few months ago uh, to basically take my 140 megahertz, 145 megahertz signal 
and down convert it to 10.7 megahertz. So I'll put a link to that video to refresh your memory on how to do that with a mixer in the video notes. So my setup is quite simple, uh, if you consider all of that. I'm taking the output from the transmitter, going through this RF tap and sampler into a dummy load. I'm taking a small piece of that signal. In my case, I'm going through a splitter because I'm going to two places. I want to take that signal up to the deviation meter I showed earlier to verify our measurements. I'm also taking that signal into, into the mixer. So you may not have to do any of that. So into the mixer, I've got my LO. I've got my 10.7 megahertz IF coming out of the mixer into the receiver. So we're doing all of that simply so I can get the signal in here. So what I'm going to do first is let's turn the transmitter on. Okay, so in order to do that, I just need to plug this plug in here. All right, and now we can see I'm transmitting the little TX indicators on. If we look over at my receiver, I can see the S meter is showing about 10 over S9 for the carrier that I've got going in here. I don't have any audio turned on yet, so this is just a the unmodulated carrier coming from uh, my transceiver. So on the audio on the signal generator here, I'm going to turn on my audio tone. And if we look at the frequency, I can see it's at 2.7 kilohertz. Now the reason I chose that is it's kind of at the upper edge of the audio pass band of the transceiver. And it also is going to give us, you know, if, if this is 2.7 kilohertz, I'm expecting a deviation to be about 4 or 5 kilohertz. That's going to give me a modulation index that's relatively low, so I'm working down in this area of the curve. So as I reduce Okay, the modulation frequency, the modulation index is going to go up. As it goes up, I'm going to start with the carrier magnet who's going to follow this curve until it crosses through zero. So by monitoring it on the receiver, at the point where I get I minimize it, it may not cross exactly through zero, but I'll minimize it. Okay, then I know that the modulation index will be about that 2.405. And then using this form of that formula, I can take the modulation frequency that I've adjusted to times 2.405 that gave me the peak deviation. So let's go do that. So I've turned the audio on. Let's look at the, uh, the estimator here and I'll start bringing the audio frequency down. As I bring it down we can see the carrier magnitude is now dropping. Okay, And as I keep going down here I see it drop down about S3 there. If I keep going down the carrier is coming back up again. So let's bring it back up again until I see I'm kind of rocking back and forth here until I find that minimum point. So that's right about there. And that's now at an audio frequency of 1.9 kilohertz. So now I know that I'm sitting at that null, so I know that my modulation index is 2.405. And I know that my modulating frequency is 1.9 kilohertz. I multiply those together, that gives me a, a frequency deviation of about 4.5 kilohertz. And if we look at my modulation meter here. There, we look at the upper scale on the right-hand side. We can see that the meter is pointing right about to 4.5 kilohertz. So that just verifies that this method is kind of showing me an accurate result. So, you know, just to review, this is just using this property of how the carrier and the sidebands vary as a function of modulation frequency and deviation and peak deviation adjusting those parameters you know into the radio in this case I was just adjusting the audio tone going into the radio until I minimize the carrier as measured on a CW receiver we can then certainly calculate the deviation using no special equipment other than a simple signal generator ideally so anyway, I hope you found this helpful and uh, maybe you can uh, use it to adjust the deviation or measure the deviation of the FM transmitters that you have thanks again for watching if you have any comments or questions uh, please let me know. Thank you.